We're back. Welcome to our second installment of Nature's Watercolors. I'm your host, Barry Underwood, and uh, we have our diver here, uh, Michael Cusack, or otherwise known as Mickey. To most people, he's known as Mickey. Um, so welcome, Mickey, to the, to the program. That's what we're going to call you now. It'll okay, be Mickey. sure. And that, um, you know, our first program, we talked about diving in general, uh, mm -hmm. just more of a um, just trying to get people's feet wet, so, so to speak. And uh, you know, today we're going to get into a bit more of a of a specific topic, which is night diving. Oh yes. And, uh, and night diving is a it's a little bit of a different animal than what uh, than From day, day dive. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get, let's get into it. What's, what's the difference as far as I mean, other than it being Dark. Uh, other than being dark out at night and light out during the day, what, is, what exactly is the difference, uh, or, I mean, as far as underwater goes? The, uh, the, the, the smaller fish, the ones that you'll see all during the daytime, basically will start heading into the coral for night sleeping because the, uh, the big predators come out at night, the big fish, the big tarpon, uh, the big octopus, the big lobsters, the big crabs. They're, that's when they start to feed. So you'll never see the small fish during the night. The, uh, the mores, instead of just being in their homes, they'll be maneuvering around through the coral looking for feed. Okay, well, I guess that's a you know, big, big difference from the day then, as oh, yeah. far as, far as uh, I mean, but they, I mean, they do feed during the day too. A lot of the, a lot of the a lot of the fish do feed the, during the, the day. The fish will the feed. Fish do, but, but you're talking about more of the crawling stuff along the ground and oh, like the, yeah. the, the, the lobsters. Big, the bigger like lobsters, the bigger crabs. You'll see them during the day, but they'll be hiding. Whereas at night, they're actually on the move, walking over the corals and actually in search for food. Same with the, uh, the mores. You'll actually see them swimming through the corals. And sometimes you'll see them, well, there, there won't be a, a hole here. They'll, you'll see the uh, the more we go in, and all of a sudden you'll see them come right back out, and it's amazing what you can, what happens at night. You see the uh, the predators you see swimming all the time. So, so tell us a little bit about your your first your first night dive. Uh, you know, when did it? When was it? Uh, I mean, as, as far as um, you know, how how long after you started diving did, did you do your first night dive and? Uh, no, it was basically uh, about three months after I got certified back in 1996. A uh, group was getting together to uh, do a night dive in Jamestown, Rhode Island. I said, sure, why not? Let's go. Well, get all dressed up and then, you know, it's dark out. There's no moon and you see a few stars and all you see is people with flashlights walking around. Well, once you get all dressed up, geared up, you walk in the water. I'm standing there knee deep in water. I can't see my fins. <laughs> I'm going, we're going to go diving? But as soon as you went in the water and turned your flashlight on, it's just like you're outside uh, picking night crawlers in the backyard. You're just looking around and you completely forget where you are. Really? Oh, it's amazing. I, mean, I would, I don't know, it would be a little bit different for me because I don't dive at all, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought it would be that way. I guess you know that. Uh, it would. I mean, that's the I mean, way it was to me. When when you use some of these these lights here or whatever, then I mean, it really lights up the area down underneath there. Oh yeah, yeah. And you have enough people with each will have lights, so you've got almost like headlights, s search beams, looking around, looking here, looking there, and. Um, yeah, once you start, it's just like uh, in your backyard. Really? Yeah. Your beam is focused into one point. And you just, your eyes basically are focused on the beams. And you, as you're, where the beam goes, you're, you're watching it. And sometimes you'll see a little crab go by, or you'll see the clam start to move, and the scallops moving around the floor. And it's just what you can see. And you, by that time, you forget where you are. But before that, that was the scariest moment at night, first time. No, 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 no. It's like, what am I doing here? I can't see my fins. It's dark. No, no. <laughs> well, you probably kind of felt that way 
during your first dive also. I mean, when you would even, even a regular day dive, maybe not quite as apprehensive because you're going, when you're going into the water during the day, you think, you know, you think you can see what's going on yeah. because it's light out. It's light out. And that, but at night, you know, like you say, like you say, um, you, you, you kind of, um, not being, not knowing, I mean, that, that would be enough for me, not knowing what's down there and what I'm going to run into. That, that, would be, that, would, that would be enough for me to. Uh, that, was, oh, that, was, that was going in the back of my head going, what's down here? But as soon as you, basically as soon as you got underneath and turned the, the flashlight on, it was like, what can I see? And you've, you basically forgot where you were. But before that, I was ready to. Yeah. <laughs> get back in the car and get, leave. I'll see you right? later. <laughs> so, so, what was the scariest night dive then that you That remember? was right there. Oh, that was it. The first one. The first one was. <laughs> not knowing, it's just not knowing what to expect. But then once you get down into the Caribbean, the water's a little more clear because the water up here is colder, so the, uh, the, the salt level is more dense, so your visibility is cut down. So when it's night out, it's dark. But down in the Caribbean, um, because of the visibility, you can see 150 feet. You have some starlight that actually filters through, so you, you do can see. Oh, 150 feet. 150 feet wow. visibility, yep. Sometimes you can't even see out and around here for 150 uh, feet. <laughs> basically, there are times where you've got your hand in front of your face and you still can't see it. And people wonder why you still dive, yeah. Not not knowing what's there, I guess that would that would that was the whole thing. Yeah. That would be the scariest part, not knowing what that. Not knowing, you no. Know, is there a shark here? I mean, you know. No, do, let, let's have, let me ask that question. As far as that type of a predator fish, or you know, uh, do they come out at night? Do they swim? I mean, as far as uh, you know, like like sharks or. or you know. Well, actually, some some um. Reef sharks will actually sleep. The uh, reef sharks, some of the nurse sharks, you'll actually see them laying right on the bottom sleeping. And but you just you, you don't you go anywhere near. No, no, you don't touch those. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you shine the light away from them, and you you, go you just look them. Okay, and you, and you move. And you keep moving. Go. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what kind of special equipment do you have to have for night diving? Uh, do you have to have a special camera? Do you or is the same, do you use the same camera? Uh, it's the same cameras. The only special equipment is just lights. Uh, most of us that in our group that we dive with will have a, uh, what they call a tank light. This will fit on the back of your tank and it'll float. And everybody can see who's who because this light is on the back. Oh, okay. and it's, oh. So it's not a, um, a beam light. So it's just like a little... Uh, uh, amber flashing light. Some have strobes to use. No, you're talking about other ones, other people down other there with people. you. How do you communicate with those people? I, I know you all don't have radios like they had on uh, on some of the TV shows. Well, and, this and isn't that, TV. That, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> uh, you know, you. I, I imagine that's one way that you that you do it is the fact that you know who has who has that particular type of a, an well, apparatus, right, on, on, the t on their tanks. Basically, we, we all have those type of lights. Some have um, blinking strobes off their uh, uh, valve, valve nut. Some are that. The regular, the only way to communicate was um, you get their attention, you can either shine the light that basically hits them on the side of the face, or if you see them looking down, you do um, circles or figure eights, to get their attention, then it's just a matter of pointing down using your the beam of the flashlight to show what you're looking for. These are um, more easy to accommodate with the travel restrictions on weight. These are a lot lighter than this like monster. These will shine for uh, 150 feet about 200 feet underwater. Really? Huh. But it's going to take eight D-cell batteries. So by the time you load this into your, you've got so much weight now that uh, some gear or some clothes that you want to take, now you can't. 
Now you have too much weight. But there are people that bring these down and they illuminate the bottom. Those must be the people that can afford the extra baggage. Evidently. And, and charges for the extra baggage. Evidently. <laughs> it was not that long ago I flew and you know, you get uh, you, know, you get charged for everything oh. pretty much now. So this case, that see, case, extra weight. No, I mean you try to try to put everything in that you can in a carry on. Oh and, yeah. And that, as much as you can. <laughs> your backpack and all. Right, and so things that you can bring on the onto the plane. Oh yeah, and uh, so if, if you don't use lights, okay, I know we talked a little bit about sun, uh, about starlight and moonlight and that. If you don't use lights, I mean, what, what exactly, you know, what exactly can you see, or you know, uh, what kind of visibility do you have without them? Without lights, basically, not much. There's very like little. So that's where you can put your hand oh, up like yeah. this and you can't even, see. Even in the Caribbean, it's without, without the lights, you have maybe six feet, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. And that's basically um, no deeper than 30 feet. Any deeper than 30 feet, you're all, whichever starlight is there dissipates. It doesn't, it doesn't oh, get you down fade that into low. The, you fade into the darkness, into the abyss. Sounds like a sounds like a TV movie. Shh, it was. Well, no. well, it was actually the a movie. Abyss. It was actually a movie. It wasn't a TV movie. A yeah. movie. And that, that was kind of a. It was a good movie, though. Sure. So, um, as far as uh, so, you get great visibility. I mean, I know we're going to see some photographs mm -hmm. later on that, but you get great visibility with with lights on. As far oh as, yeah, as that's far as that's your whole illumination right there, your flashlight. It's like I said, it's a look, you know, seeing some of the preview of the pictures, that it, it, it does, it looks like daylight down oh, there. It does, with, with enough, uh, because I use two strobes, I have enough light that I can, in, it works. I bring my own sunlight with me. Mm. Okay, that, that works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, bring the sun down there, you know. That's it. Of course, uh, of course luckily it doesn't, uh, doesn't boil out the ocean, right? Right. <laughs> You mentioned uh, about other people carrying lights, as far as uh, that that helps you also to be able to see. I'm sure, and like you say, you you do communicate with the lights. Oh sure, you get let's say 10 to 15 people underwater at night, and they all have flashlights. Well, you can see the whole area starts to light up now because everybody's putting their beams into this one area, and it's opens it up like a uh, like a spotlight. And just zooming there, so basically you can stay in the background because I do with the photography and see what's going on. Then once they discover what's what's there, I'll wait till they move along. But I'll always have a few that'll stay with me and use their flashlights to help me light the area. Well, they don't realize that their beams have uh, what they call hot spots. So when you take your shots, all you see is these bright spots in your photographs and it's like, what's going on here? Well, those are flashlights. So you try to, you tell the, inform the people that get my attention, but don't use your flashlight. When I drop mine, put it away because there's hot spots. Which yours doesn't drown out. I mean, it doesn't blend, the blend oh, those they, out. Because, because of the, the intensity of the light, even with two strobes, you can, you, you can pick out your spot, the flashlights. I remember the la on the last program we uh, that we did the first first program last program, <laughs> oh, uh, we had that Maury eel in there, and I yes. know you know I know that you said people were were pointing or, or you know trying to warn you that the eel yeah, was, the was, eel was there. There was eel there, and that, but uh, uh, they weren't using flashlights at that time though, right? Well, that was that was during the day. That was during the day. That okay. was during the day because I was trying to shoot a, sh a shrimp that was on a piece of coral next to it and I was using his front door as a balance point with my finger. So he wanted to come out and see what was going on. <laughs> and I was I like that story. That's great. <laughs> that really is. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, well I guess we kind of talked about the uh, difference between no moon and full moon diving then. I mean that kind of covers it with the, oh, with the it, lights. Yeah. You, you it's just like you're walking outside at night. Uh, you walk into, the, let's, let's say you walk into the woods at night during a full moon you can base, you can you maneuver your way. You go back out at a no moon night, 
and try to maneuver your way through there. It's pretty much impossible. You kind of need the lights. You need the point, lights. So, so it's not. Uh, how about currents? You know, I mean, I know you know. There's always currents in the in the, oh, there's o always in the, in the ocean. You know. And it doesn't it doesn't matter if it's nighttime or daytime. Yeah, they're there. Uh, there was one dive where we went down uh, 45, 50 feet, and we caught a current going north. Because well, uh, there's time line, time limits that we use in order for it to be a safe dive. So we get to basically our half an hour underwater at this point, we come up to about 30, 25, 30 feet, we caught an opposite current going the opposite way. So we were, we did the complete dive on a complete drift dive on a current and nobody used any air because you didn't have to kick. You just floated right along and you brought up and you floated right back. Really? Oh, it was fantastic. Is that a usual type no, of thing? No. No, that's very unusual. Uh, very unusual. Uh, going on that, how do you find your way back at night? If you, if you're, if you're, I, I know you're with other people, so and that, and I'm sure somebody has says has compasses or something to uh, to get you back. But I mean, you know, how do you find? You know, I, I find it hard, you know, when I'm out in a, when I'm out in a boat to. You know, I don't go out very often in a boat, but, but when, when I was younger, we went out, and I always find it hard to find my way back to where, you know, uh, mm -hmm. finding landmarks and things like that, especially at night. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it's it's got to be tough. Um, well, some of the hotels throughout the Caribbean, uh, if they have any um, boat docks, will actually have a, a line running from the um, boat dock all the way down to the bottom, which could be anywhere from 150 to 200 feet. So no matter which way you go, whether you make a left turn or a right turn at night, and when you're on a return trip, you always come across the, the line. And that line will bring you always back to the hotel, right back to the, to the docks and the staircases, uh, where there's um, some places where we um, wanted a, a salt pier in Bonaire. It's uh, where they do uh, make sea salt, and it's a big uh, concrete piling, pilings, and uh, where the, uh, the big uh, freighters come in, and they load, the, load them in. There are no lights. There are no ropes. It's, there's only just a few lights from the streets that you have to maneuver your way around. You have to basically go during the daytime and count the pilings in order to find out where you are at night so you can come back. Those can be tricky. No, they don't make sea salt. Sea they salt evaporate. They evaporate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say it's in the sea, so they yeah. don't make it. But, uh, but let's and then sometimes we'll put uh, marker lights on a piece of coral as we're going down, and at night you'll be able to see. Uh, we most of the time we'll use a strobe, so as you're coming back, you'll see the strobe. Oh, okay, here we go, and then you're out of the water. Kind of like the Hansel and Gretel thing. Where yeah, the, you drop the, the chips. Drop the yeah, yeah, Raptor so comes. <laughs> Does, uh, how about water temperature? Does it change much from day to night? Uh, Just a few degrees. It'll be 82, 83 at night. It'll come down to 80, 81 at night, only because the sun isn't radiating. But it's constant uh, around 80 degrees give or take a few degrees. Well, that, of course, that all depends on where you're diving to. Oh, sure. Know, I mean, if you're diving off the coast if you're of in Boston the or, or something, or the main coast, it's, you know, it's cold. It's going to be doesn't, cold. It doesn't know? matter. And you better wear a wetsuit at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, um, just going off on a little tangent here, have you ever you know, have you ever been diving off of like the, the um, coast of Maine or? Or, uh, yeah, we used we did um, uh, Nubble Light, did uh, Bar Harbor, did that. a Kitter Kittery, Maine, Fort Foster and Kittery, and we'd work our way down the coast. So we we'd hit uh, different locations, different weekends. So you were not always going back to the same location. You traveled and checked this place out, and the further north you went in Maine, 
the colder the water got. <laughs> I know, I've been there. <laughs> How about the St. Lawrence Seaway? Have you ever? Have not you that ever, far. Not that far. Not no, that far. Didn't get up that far. So. So. All right. Well, now let's let's start to get into some of our some of our pictures, which the viewers sure. I'm sure would like to see too. You know, first you got to explain what a delicate is, because I'm sure most people probably don't know what a delicate is. Just like I didn't know what a delicate was, so until until you explained it to me, sure. and that. So if you could s explain what you know what a delicate is. It's some of the anemones, some of the, the soft corals, some of the um, starfish, some of the actual fish, um, lobsters and the squid, uh, not the lobsters, but the, uh, the octopus and the squids. Those will come out at night, they're soft bodies, and if during the day, they'd be eaten. Whereas like the, uh, the anemones, certain anemones are out during the day, they have um, protection. Uh, as you, sometimes you'll see the, um, the shows on TV where they have the clownfish that swim into the anemones and they're, they're immune to their stingers. Well, it's the same during the day. The anemones have their, their own little stingers. But the ones that come out at night don't. They're um, defenseless, you might say. So basically that, and then that was where we would get the, your delicates. Then you get into the, your, your bigger creatures would be your, your lobsters and your crabs, um, your tarpon. The big moray eels, the big predators. They're the ones that eat the delicates. Eat the delicates. So. And the delicates have no protection if they were to be out during the day. Um, the smaller fish that usually are out during, in the coral reefs would actually be, be eating them. So they would be non-existent. So they're basically the lowest, end, about like the lowest end on the food chain in, in, yeah. this, in the ocean. Yeah, uh, and to, to, to survive, they only come out at night. Well, I guess, uh, I guess they, they've got it down then. They oh, know, yeah. they know that they yeah. only come out at night. Only yeah. come out at night. So, so well, what kind of delicates do you find? I, well, I guess you, you kind of explained some, but you know, we've we got the pictures here. and. You know, the, type of the types of delicates that... Uh okay, this um, is a giant sea anemone. It's about the size of a dish rack that you would have on your sink for drying your dishes. It's basically about that size. Uh, I'd say maybe 14, 14 by 18. And they only come out at night, and those are bright purple colors. It looks like a plant. Well, it really it, does. It's basically, it's, basically it's, a soft, it's a soft body plant. Okay. And in order for it to survive, they, they only come out at night. So what does it do during the day? Does it it, it uh, retreats down inside a coral head where oh. you can see in between, it actually retreats, retreats down inside. Okay. And sometimes when you're looking down inside the coral head at night, with your flashlights, all of a sudden you see these pairs of red lights. Well, it's actually... Uh, small crabs that are looking up at you. But they're so far down that w the, there's not enough light to get into it. And actually see the crabs. See like the you crabs. you can see their eyes. Be or because or their eyes are on their, along their uh, what they, uh, antennas, they'll actually be looking underneath and you, you, know, you see just a glitter of them. Okay. Well, then you can get into the um, these are called orange coral polyps. These, these only come out at night. And if they come out during the day, the fish would have a feast on those. Looks like a flower garden of, of it's some It's basically, kind. yeah. It, it really does. That's uh, definitely a nice picture. <laughs> no. Really looks like it was taken out, in the, out on the outside someplace. Yeah. And well, with, with the lights I have, it does look like it's, that's not daytime, that's not nighttime, yeah. You sure? You sure? It's nighttime. It's nighttime. <laughs> wow. Then we can, then there's, um, okay. This is a basket star. It's a type of starfish, <laughs> but when it opens up, it'll be, that's probably about a two and a half foot diameter spread on it. And the only, f they're night feeders, 
So they capture all the small little plankton and it runs at night. And where do they capture? They actually capture them in those... They have little, little tiny hairs on each of those little fingers and delicate uh, the arms. And they come out at night and they just spread open. And sometimes if you're lucky enough to catch in there with your macro lens, you can shoot them. But they can sense water movement and they'll just fold up. Because a lot of times during the day, you're going by and you see what looks like um, matted twine on a coral head. Well, it's actually a basket star during the day. Because if they were out during the day, they'd be eaten. It almost looks like, um, like a, uh, uh, what's that bird? The, the, that, uh, peacock? A peacock. You know? I mean, that, uh, that type of a, you know. Not, I mean, not quite, but but it but it almost looks, you know. Oh yeah. It has that same type of an effect on it, and uh, like the NBC peacock. Yeah. And what? And okay, you said they catch plankton and the, the, and the tiny do, planktons, yeah. And what do they do with it? <laughs> that would that, that's their that's their food. That's their food. Yeah, well. the microscopic. Oh. Okay. Well, that's that's they're at the bottom of the food chain. They start off with a small and <coughs> everything works their way up. Even the giants of the oceans, the, uh, the whales, eat the plankton. Of course, they have to consume uh, tons. An awful lot more plankton. A lot than more than <laughs> something like this. <laughs> then um, on the island of Cosmo, Mexico, they have what they call um, a splendid, splendid toadfish. It's the only place in the world where this fish can actually be seen. They can only come out at night. It looks like um, a bullhead with stripes. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it looks, you know, you're right, it does. Yeah. An and interesting thing, yeah, really. And only at night. The dive masters uh, in Mexico, if they see that you're interested in photography, that you're not going to shun them, that you're going to look for something. Sometimes they'll go out of their way looking for stuff for you to shoot. This one particular dive master come, come over and grabbed me and brought me over and pointed down and showed me the, the toadfish. And actually I had to turn the camera upside down and bounce the strobes off the sand to get it because I, I couldn't get the whole system down there. Oh. Well, you did good, though. You did get it. Oh, you know, yeah. And that, you got a good picture of it, too. Good picture. So, very, you know. So, these are, so these are some of the things that are down in the, in the ocean, people. <laughs> oh, yes, they are. You know? And it's, uh, I mean, a lot of these things we've never seen. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of fortunate to be able to be going down and actually seeing some of these, some of these things that, that we'll never see. A, a basket, you know, basket star, fish, star basket. A star basket. I mean, we'll, we'll you know. Never see I'll, it. I'll never see one no. of those. You won't see one of those in a zoo or in a, at an aquarium probably either. No, Not because during the, the aquarium are only open during the day during and the day. they won't be there. At, but if you go back at night, they may be there. I've never seen <laughs> Then you can, uh, the octopus come out. We were coming back from a dive on our way back to the hotel, and I saw this movement out of the corner of my eye, and it was this octopus screaming on the bottom looking for, must have been late for a date. <laughs> and he was actually um, probably about three foot. Late for a date. Okay. Late for a date. <laughs> yeah, probably a food date. Yeah, you know, probably yeah. went, went, was going for. So what, what a mollusk. What do they eat? Um, the clams. Uh, some of the um, freshwater scallop, uh, warm water scallops that are down there. They'll go for that. Um, even some of the crabs and some of the small crustaceans they'll go after. Some of the, uh, the small lobsters, because the, the lobsters down there don't have uh, claws like they, they have up here, so they can actually ingest, <coughs> latch on one of the, the um, lobsters and go from there. <coughs> you know, when I, see, when I see a picture of an octopus, or, you know, we talk about an octopus, you, know, you think of those, some of those sci-fi movies that they have, the, the giant octopus or whatever, you know. 
and that. And well, same thing. If they were to take a close-up of that and blow it up, it would look like it's humongous. <laughs> yeah. And put a small <laughs> ship next to it. It's like, whoa, look at that. Yeah, yeah, ship in a bottle. Yeah, or just like, right. <laughs> just like 20,000 leagues under the sea. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, I never, never see one in their environment. You know, you, you know, I have seen these at uh, at an aquarium or something. They do. They, have, they there's, do, there's, there's, yeah. There are. They do. No, there's, but there's also got to be different types, different kinds of, you know, of octopus. Yeah. Also, you'll have a few that'll come out during the day, but your most of the variety will come out at night. Because so, yeah, I know I I've seen them at some of the aquariums anyway. And sometimes you'll catch them um, when they, as they're moving, and when the, once they settle down, they'll actually try to uh, camouflage themselves to the to the bottom. They actually change. You can actually watch them change colors. So from that gray, what you saw in the first one, to this one, you can actually see them just change colors. To go with whether the environment. Wherever they is on the bottom, yeah. Be. So they you they try to hide, but. You can see what they are. Well, try to. Yeah, it kind of blends in there a little oh, bit. Oh yeah. You know? says, "Where's the octopus?" And you have to point it out to it. There's the there's the head. There's the two eyes. And oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And what's all the uh, as far as the? Uh, those are sponges. Sponges. Yeah, those are red sponges. Basically, anything red, you don't, uh, you don't touch. You don't eat. It's a rule of thumb underwater. The fish don't even touch it. The, um, the turtles that usually eat sponge won't touch those. They're like poison ivy. Wow. Turtles eat sponges? Yeah. Really? Yeah. You actually see them sometimes just laying on the bottom or resting and take a bite out of it and watch them actually eat, eat the sponge. Boy, Certain getting, sponge. Boy, I'm getting an education here, huh? Yeah, all, yeah. all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure it's, you know. And in one dive, we ran across um, reef squid. These, uh, this is a male and female. The male is about 17 inches long. It's a good size. Wow. And the big ones will come out at night. During the day, they're, they're translucent. But at night is when they come out with their colors. So evidently, they, night, they might have been courting each other. And one of the friends got their attention and started doing, waving his hands and his flashlights. And the, uh, as w once I took the shot, I got it back home. And I was looking at it. And if you look at the front of the, the main squid, you can see a distortion on the top of its head. He was actually inking the water at night. Somebody said, well, how can you tell? Because there's a distortion right above its, right above its head. There's a little distortion in the water. OK, yeah. Compared to, compared the, to the rest com of it. Compared right. to the rest of it. Yeah. And so I, once I blew that one up, you can see actually see the distortion. It was neat. You never, you never think it, you'd see the, uh, the ink at night. But it's a um, uh, distortion. It looks like um, the heat coming off your uh, hood of your engine. Okay. Well, that's a. Well. And some of the squids, those are uh, basically small size. They do get up. Uh, the uh, the Humboldt squid in the Pacific will get up to eight to ten feet body length. Then their arms and tentacles will go another thirty to forty feet. And those will take a diver down. They'll latch on and just straight down. That's why there's a lot of, if you see the shows on TV where they're uh, filming, filming the Humboldt squid, the divers are actually attached to a boat with uh, anchor lines, with rope. So if they do get dragged, they won't get dragged. They, they, right, they, they they'd only dragged. go down so far, and that's it. Some of them, some of the uh, photographers will have. Uh, uh, what they call armor planing, but uh, like uh, uh, hockey pads, the uh, the plastics, they'll wrap those around because some of the tentacles are um, have teeth in them, and they'll get in and start, and they'll actually bite you, 
Well, some of the, the bigger squid. Those you leave alone. Now I know I don't do diving. <laughs> Either night or day <laughs> diving. <laughs> so, so those are the those are the delicates. Those are the delicates. And, uh, and uh, now we're going. I know we're going to go oh. to colors. Um, well, basically the the delicates. That's when you have your colors: the oranges, the purples, the yellows, the stuff that you would see during the day. These are much brighter at night because they are basically defenseless. They have no uh, defense mechanism. They only feed at night. So, what? Uh, you know, these are just some of the some of the ones, some, that, of, the some, of, the, yes. some of the things that you actually see down there. Yeah. Um, and that, like you say, and then you also see ones that are sleeping. Because well, sometimes doing, you we're see doing night diving, so they're so they're actually uh, down on the bottom. Oh, you can actually see some of the uh, uh, the parrotfish. Uh, some of them they're up to two feet, three feet. You actually see them inside the coral. But what you don't want to do is go in and disturb them. But some people will, and it looks like um, they're a pinball machine. Because they're, they're still in a daze, not knowing where they are. And you would wake them up, and it, they start bouncing uh, inside the coral. They look like a pinball machine. You see the fish start bouncing around like the, uh, the ball in a pinball. They keep bouncing around. You see the actual fish bounce, bouncing around. Aren't you, you know, aren't Something you, to do. Yeah, yeah. No. <coughs> I guess, you know, aren't you concerned about uh, any of these the eels and stuff like that at night as far as, you know, I, mean, you know, um, I guess, I guess you've got to be concerned about them. You know, oh, and, they're, and they're, they're always in the back of your mind. Yeah. But so long as you don't disturb them, it's just like, um, like the last time. If you see a bee's nest in the woods, you go play with it. You're going to get Some stung. Some people do. Some people <laughs> do. But it's basically, now you're in their world, and you see them moving around. At night, you, you've, you have your distance. So basically, you're anywhere from 15 feet to 20 feet from the coral. You may be down 50 feet, but you're still away, just in case something like, I just like, the, yeah, come something the, the comes out and says, hello. <laughs> But actually, they're, they're just searching for food. And you just happen to be at the right place, and there he goes. And some of the divers will start chasing them. Well, you don't want to do that, because they will actually turn around and come back. And I've seen them actually come back and nip somebody's fins. And it's like, oh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> oh, you did you nothing. You chased them. <laughs> So approximately how many, how many night dives have you done? In, About in 215. Wow. A few dives. I guess so. A few dives. There are sometimes, some of the, um, who are down on vacation in the Caribbean, sometimes we'll uh, actually make two dives at night, which is, uh, well, you know, we're pushing the, our limits of diving. But it's there, so you do it. You're only staying basically 30 feet at, when you start getting too many dives in, you, you want to stay in the shallows. And sometimes in the shallows, you see more stuff in the shallows than you do in the deeps. Well, most of the pictures that we've already seen then are more the deeper. Uh, the no, deeper? these are no. basically um, no more than 30 feet, 35 feet deep. Probably. I'd say these are basically just in the shallows. So, so what else? Um, I know you have some more pictures over there. Now we have now we have the creatures. The creatures. The creatures. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like a sci-fi, uh, sci-fi movie. Sci-fi movie. <laughs> You're gonna see crabs. This is a spiny crab, or a rock crab. The body itself is like the size of a dinner plate. In these are when you're going to see the big guys come out. The whole body is covered in uh, like spines. Yeah, I could see that. It, it looks like it looks like those could hurt you. If I you, wouldn't. I wouldn't if, touch. If you, if oh, you yeah. went to grab one of those, you know, when we were down, um, we were down in Florida one time in, in, in the Gulf, 
we were swimming in there and we were picking up starfish. You know, that's kind of what it reminds you of. But I, but they weren't sharp. You know, no. the, the, and that. But these are, but these are sharp. These are sharp. Yeah. These are sharp. Yeah, those look like they could hurt you. Oh yeah, they wouldn't. <laughs> then um, besides the um, the spiny lobsters, they have what they call a, a Spanish lobster or um, a, a slipper lobster. So if you actually, if, if you're looking down on the top of it, the body looks like the bottom of a, your slipper. Basically that, that same shape. But if you catch them on the right side, this is looking into his face. Okay. And um, they look like um, a walking armadillo without the head. They have that type of um, uh, shell formation. So if they were to be attacked, they just roll into a ball. It'd be almost like a uh, hard ball that you wouldn't get into. But he got his eyes looking at you. And yeah, well, staring you down. Staring right. you down. Wants to make sure you're not coming anywhere near him. That's, that's the whole thing. That's so, the whole thing. You know. You know, you're going to come near me? Uh, I'm going to roll up in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, the Caribbean does have king crab. He was, oh, I'd say about 18 inches. That would be a king crab. Yeah. It's a king <laughs> crab. In the only crabs I know I've seen them running on the beach, they're, they're yeah, small. Yeah, little fiddler crabs, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the other divers got his attention. Otherwise, it would be crawling along. All of a sudden, he just sat up looking at him like, what are you doing? What are you doing here? That's what it looks like. Oh, yeah. He, was, he was, wasn't too happy. I guess not. Uh, you shouldn't be that one shouldn't here. Shouldn't be that one here. This is my house. <laughs> then we ran across um, a spiny lobster. They're almost the same as the lobsters up here, but they don't have the, the big, uh, big claws. The big claws. What they have is uh, whip antennas. And to see them with the whip antennas on the water, it's like you put a, uh, a switch on the outside in the air doing it. They can do it as fast as that. And the closer I got to this guy, the further out the nest, uh, the further out it came. Evidently, it was guarding its nest. Okay. So yeah. the closer I got, the further it got, and it was starting to hunch itself out, and it's like, ooh, this guy is... Uh, Getting too close for comfort. Well, I'm only here taking a picture, and <laughs> off I went. And I'm leaving then. Yes. Now, what could they, what basically could they do? I mean, as far as, could they, could they hurt you at all? Yeah, just if they hit, hit you with your, uh, their antennas. Those are full of the spines like that little crab was. Those will hurt. It's um, like a real coarse file. Okay. And if it hits you, it's, it'll, do, it'll do damage. OK. Well, no, remind me not to go anywhere near those. And sometimes if you're real lucky, oh, you, nice. you catch a turtle. This was evidently just resting on the bottom. A couple other divers spotted, went over, and started harassing it. So all of a sudden you see the lights, you see the turtle, you see the lights on a turtle, and it's heading forward. Well, there was enough divers in front of it where it spotted the lights. And I decided, well, I'm going to turn everything I have off. So it, at the last second it turned and started coming, coming, coming. I waited with, with, within six feet of me before I snapped it shot. And then it, once it hit the lights and it, it took off, it was unhappy being disturbed. <laughs> well, they're not ones that, uh, that are actually, they're not nocturnal, right? They're, the turtles are, are, are daytime things. Turtles, right? yeah. And, and, I mean, but evidently they're out at night also, and as is evidence here. It was, you know, oh, so. yeah. But, but like you say, if you disturb them, it's like anything else. Like if you see a shark down there and you go and you disturb it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move. Oh, and, it, it, and, if you, you disturb a shark, it'll come after you. Yeah, because it wants its beauty sleep. Oh, yeah. And that turtle there was basically um, almost three and a half foot shell. Wow. Oh. It was a big guy. 
be out. The picture probably doesn't do it justice. Doesn't as far do, no. as, you know, this, the Then you, um, here's a tarpon. Some of the bigger ones will come out at night. Some of them get up to about seven foot, 200 pounds. And these will actually um, follow the divers alongside of you. If you've got your flashlight and you're watching the bottom and you see uh, small fish, which the tarpon would consider lunch, they would actually go off into the darkness. And as long as you hold your light there, they'll come in, snap it, and come back and swim right alongside you. Some down in the uh, island of Bonaire, they're so used to divers at night, they'll actually come up and nudge you. Hey, you're not using your flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's wild. So there are friendly fish. These, these are they're, friendly they're fish. They're accustomed to. Except, except to the, what they're, when they're getting food. They're, they're gonna you don't disturb. Eating, eating is eating. But so long as you, you, you hold your flashlight on some of the smaller bait fish, they'll go off into the darkness. And with the light, the small fish are uh, almost blinded. So the tarpon will just come in and you'll, you'll, you'll actually hear them slam its jaw. And come right back in. OK, here we go. Where are we going for the next one? Right, it's fun. You can actually hear that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sound travels four times faster underwater than it does on land. Why? I have no clue. But you can actually hear them slam their jaws. Bang! Yeah, it looks like he might have some powerful jaws. Too. Oh, yeah. Then you get into the, some of the small, this is a golden moray. It's probably about two and a half feet long. And I saw him swimming down through the bottom, checking all the coral heads, looking for something. And I figured, well, maybe he's not, he's not going to find nothing. He's going to come back out. So I waited for a couple of minutes. And he, there he comes. And, he's, and I just happened to be right there and just waited for him to come out. So instead of actually being Perfect. in his house, to actually round about, moving around. Perfect picture. Perfect so picture. He posed for you very, very nicely yeah. there. That's, you know, even smiled for you. Oh, he's, he's even a better smile. <laughs> and here's a uh, big green moray. He was probably about seven foot. It is a better smile. He's got a better it smile. He does. It just happened to catch him when he was just breathing. And it looked like, oh, he's smiling. He's smiling, yeah. <laughs> I want my picture taken, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But some of, the, some of that dive there, some of the divers disturbed it. And it found a uh, hole one underneath one of the coral heads. And I saw the other divers over here. And I stayed on one side. And he, here he comes. And it's like, OK. Well, he's got some color to him, huh? I oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. really some are lime green. Some are dark green. But they're still nasty. Some, those are the ones you still don't want to touch. No. Any of them. Any, any of them. Any, any. Well, they actually, their teeth grow inward. So if they were to latch onto you, you would never want to pull your finger out. You'd wait for them to, to breathe. Because otherwise, they, they would just, you'd strip your f uh, finger right down to the bone. Those would take your, take your arm. You can get a little fish here. A little fish. Yeah, yeah. So. A little reflection. Very nice. Well, some nice pictures. Thank you. Uh, very, very nice pictures. So, so, so what's your, what, what, is, what plans do you have for your next dive? Or have you made plans yet for your next dive? Uh, not yet. It's still a little early in the season. You will we'll probably start making warm water dives until uh, August or so. But for um, once the water opens up, uh, once, once we get into July up here, we'll start diving. New England, uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Mass. And if you put in for your lobster permit, you can go out and catch you supper. Actually pick up. <laughs> oh, yeah. But every time you can go out, get your lobster, and oh, I get mussels here, and mussels and lobster, and on your way home. 
So, that, so that's what you do on your that's, way home. That's ah. what you do on your way home. <laughs> Go catch and lobster. Can you catch any in like five mile pond around here? <laughs> Different kind. You know, you get a little crayfish. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, Car dads. Mm, yeah. Nothing you want to eat either. Uh, no. So, no. Well, there's freshwater clams, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to try for those. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, or that's about night diving? That's about. That's, uh, that's about. We that's about pretty night much diving. covered it. That's so. pretty much. So, well, thank you for sharing on. this with us. You're I've welcome. gotten myself an education. I'm yeah. sure that the uh, viewers at home have also got us got an education, and uh, that. And we've enjoyed doing this. These these two programs that, that was we've fun. done. It's been. It has been fun. Well, that's why here a lot of people can. Uh, actually see what's underwater without going there actually knowing well, let somebody else do it let him do exactly. it exactly yeah. I was gonna say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one that goes underwater to do that yeah. uh, no I'll go underwater in my pool but that's but that's about it there you, you know? go and, that, and even that's above ground so <laughs> <laughs> well that's, no. now you won't fall far that's right <laughs> so. But uh, no, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing that with Quite us. Welcome. And, uh, and uh, we thank you very much for watching uh, and tuning in to our two uh, Nature's Watercolors. And that, until next time, thank you.